this presentation we will be taking up one of the important uh, arc welding process that is called uh, tungsten inert gas uh, arc welding process or uh, it is also known as the uh, gas tungsten arc welding process GTA. So, these are the, there are two uh, abbreviations accordingly the TIG for uh, tungsten inert gas welding process or uh, GTA for gas tungsten arc welding process. This is one of the uh, most commonly used welding process for developing the high quality weld joints for critical applications like in aerospace and the nuclear uh, sector. Uh, because uh, the quality of the weld offered by this process is uh, excellent in respect of the soundness of the weld and uh, the kind of heat input it uh, helps in develop, uh, heat input it provides to develop the weld joint um, is very low and further uh, which in turn helps in developing the weld joints without uh, much uh, discontinuities in the weld. So, uh, in this presentation we will be talking about what are the uh, various aspects related with the GTAW process which includes uh, the arc welding system, uh, gas tungsten arc welding system. Then we will be taking up the power source, the welding current and uh, the kind of polarity which is used and uh, the sealing gases which are used along with their effectiveness when welding uh, the variety of the materials. So, as far as content is concerned, we will be uh, taking up first the introduction about the need for uh, having this kind of the process and under what conditions it was developed and how it was beneficial in the beginning and how it is being used nowadays. Then we will see that uh, what are the important constraints and components of the TIG welding system. Then we will see the electrode. Uh, what are the common types of the electrodes and their uh, shapes uh, which are used for developing the weld joints using the TIG process. Then the important welding parameters like welding current is speed and uh, the arc voltage and then the common sealing gases which are used in the uh, GTAW process or the TIG welding process. Uh, these are mainly uh, the argon and the helium and their mixtures are also commonly used, but there are certain specific situations where particular kind of sealing gas is preferred. You will also see the methods which are used for arc initiation in the GTAW process and the pulse uh, mode of the gas tungsten arc welding process. So, starting with the, this, uh, uh, this process is unique in the sense uh, uh, with the other process uh, that uh, it uh, uh, develops the arc. Uh, for generating the heat uh, uh, with, uh, by uh, using uh, a non consumable electrode. So, basically arc is uh, generated between the non consumable electrode uh, and the base material uh, by uh, and uh, the heat flow uh, determines the amount of the heat being generated uh, during the welding. Uh, because uh, this process can work at very low level of the current. So, uh, this results in the advantage of uh, having the very low heat input while developing the weld joints and that is why very effectively used for those metal systems which require very less heat input for developing the weld sound weld joints or they require or, the, uh, or for welding the very thin sheets where less heat input is mandatory to avoid the melt through kind of the conditions. So, uh, this uh, the key advantage related with the tungsten inert gas welding process that it offers very low heat input uh, for developing the weld joints as for and uh, very clean weld is also produced. So, uh, if you see the important features of this uh, process, it basically uses uh, the tungsten electrode which is non consumable kind and it uses very um, inert gases like helium and argon to protect the weld pool and these in turn help in developing the sound and quality weld joint. Further, uh, this effective shielding uh, associated with the GTA process and due to the smooth and stable arc and short arc length helps in developing the high quality weld joints even of the reactive metals like aluminum and the magnesium which uh, immediately gets oxidized. Uh, with the uh, atmospheric air or the oxygen present in the atmospheric air uh, 
and uh, because of these high quality weld joints or even of the reactive metals, uh, these are used for the critical applications in aerospace and the chemical industry and the nuclear reactors. So, why this uh, has been important uh, when it was developed? Because uh, in the early uh, 90s, uh, 90th century, when uh, this process was not uh, uh, there, at that time a lot of difficulties were faced because of uh, the poor atmospheric, con uh, atmospheric uh, uh, poor control over the atmospheric contamination uh, when we were using the gas welding process or the ciliate metal arc welding process. So, the, uh, and the another was we had uh, at that time very poor control over the heat input, uh, especially while welding the thin sheets or while welding the reactive uh, metals. So, to deal with these two difficulties when uh, in mid century, uh, mid 90th century um, in this uh, the tungsten and gas welding process was uh, developed, it helped in uh, protecting the weld pool in much better way and it allowed us to have uh, the better control over the heat input. So, this invention of this process in the middle of 20th century gave a boost to the fabricators of these reactive metals as none of these processes which were existing at that time like the ciliate metal arc welding process and the gas welding uh, were uh, uh, available at that time were able to weld the things effectively because of the, these two limitations. One poor atmospheric, uh, uh, poor co control over the atmospheric contamination of the weld and the poor control over the heat input. So, this development of the GTA process helped in achieving the better atmospheric, uh, better control over the atmospheric contamination of the weld and uh, that also helped in controlling the heat input in very effective way. If you talk about the GTA welding system, it includes uh, one non consumable tungsten electrode and the base material and the arc is striked between the non consumable tungsten electrode and the base material and the heat generated by the arc is used for melting the fang surfaces of the base material to be joined and uh, this, this heat is also used for uh, melting the filler material by putting in the arc zone to fill up the gap between the plates to be joined. Apart from this uh, uh, to have the required amount of the welding current, the suitable power supply is used. So, one terminal of the electrode is connected to the uh, one terminal of the power source is connected to the electrode and another terminal is connected and an another terminal of the power source is connected to the base material. While for providing the effective shielding gas, uh, effective shielding to uh, the weld pool, the inert gas uh, is also used so that weld can be protected from the atmospheric contamination. Uh, this process is considered to be good for welding of uh, thin sheets because uh, it allows us uh, ha to have the better control over the heat input and it can have a uh, very smooth and stable arc even with the low, with the very low level of the welding currents like uh, we can easily work uh, in the range of 50 to 100 ampere uh, current range. Uh, which will be generating very less heat and supplying the very low heat input to the base material. So, because of this advantage related with this uh, the GTAW process, uh, it helps in developing the sound weld joints of the thin sheets uh, which are even less than uh, 1 mm. Uh, if we talk about the GTA welding system, which uh, will uh, be uh, playing an important role in developing the sound weld joint by this process. Uh, this includes the suitable power supply, maybe AC or the DC kind, which can help us in obtaining the desired amount of the welding current, so that the heat can be generated. How the selection of uh, the type of the welding current is governed by the kind of metal uh, being welded and uh, the kind of arc stability which is desired. Uh, especially like uh, the AC is used for the aluminum welding, while uh, for the better life of the electrode DC uh, is preferred. Then uh, some kind of cooling system is used uh, with the GTAW process to maintain the temperature of the electrode uh, within the limits, so that longer life of the electrode can be obtained. So, the welding torch is cooled either with the help of the air or the water accordingly. Uh, the, the current carrying capacity of the tungsten electrode is uh, obtained. Uh, water cooling permits us to have the higher current capacity because electrical resistance heating uh, 
which will be causing the temperature rise in the tungsten electrode that can be easily maintained by uh, water cooling. So, all the water cooled welding torches allow us to work uh, under the higher current with the higher current capacity. So, for a high current TIG welding systems water cooling becomes mandatory uh, and that is the range say above 150 ampere it, it is common to use the water cooling to maintain the welding uh, electrode. Uh, tungsten electrode within the safe temperature limit, while for uh, the low current uh, uh, the TIG welding systems uh, uh, the air cooling is found good enough to maintain the temperature of the tungsten electrode within the safe limits. Similarly, the nozzle air temperature is also maintained uh, within the limits, so that uh, unnecessary overheating does not damage. Uh, uh, to the electrode because the electrode is required uh, this uh, the nozzle is uh, frequently required to be replaced because it loses its shape after some time during the use. Uh, the third important component in the GTA uh, system or the TIG welding system is uh, the use of the shielding gas. Inert gas uh, uh, like uh, the helium and argon is commonly used to protect the weld pool from the atmospheric contamination and mixtures are also effectively used to have the, um, the good uh, protection to the weld pool apart from the generation of the good amount of the heat, so that uh, the high welding speeds can be obtained. So, for those conditions especially mixtures uh, of the helium and argon or um, argon with the oxygen and the nitrogen are preferred. And uh, the third important thing, uh, fourth uh, important component of the GTA welding system is the some kind of control we need to have to move the welding torch uh, during the welding, so that uh, the heat can be generated along the line of uh, uh, along the line where uh, the weld is to be made. And this uh, movement can be uh, obtained either manually or the using the semi automatic process or the complete automatic processes. So, depending upon the kind of control which is required for moving the welding torch, we can have the various variants. But but some sort of the control um, is required to move uh, the welding torch in controlled ways, so that uh, the heat can be generated in the places where desired for melting the fang surfaces of the base material. How this uh, process work in uh, that we will see now that uh, the heat generated by the electric arc between the non consumable tungsten electrode and the work piece. This heat is primarily used for melting the fang surfaces of the mostly reactive metals, which uh, immediately reacts with the oxygen and the nitrogen gases present in the atmospheric air. And these metals uh, like aluminum, magnesium, stainless steels, these are uh, effectively welded by melting uh, the fang surfaces using the heat generated between the tungsten electrode and the work piece. So, this is how it is, uh, um, it is used uh, for melting the fang surfaces. But, uh, the amount of the heat generation uh, uh, will be uh, governed by the kind of current which is being used and the arc voltage which is established between the tungsten electrode and the work piece. Uh, if you see uh, the power source required for delivering the required welding current, so that the heat generated can be um, uh, used effectively for melting the fang surfaces. This is mainly governed by the kind of current which can be delivered by the power source. It is common to use the constant uh, current type of the welding power source, so that uh, the current uh, can be maintained during the welding largely constant and so that the uniform largely uniform amount of the heat can be generated uh, for uh, developing the uniform weld. Uh, depending upon the current carrying capacity, uh, the TIG welding systems are found to uh, and, uh, are found to be capable of delivering the welding current in the range of 3 to uh, 200 ampere or 5 to 300 ampere. So, this is the range indicating the, cap, uh, the capacity to deliver the current uh, for higher current capacity invariably water cooling is uh, used, so that the temperature of the electrode can be maintained within the safe limits. The welding voltage uh, uh, is found to range from 10 to 35 volt, uh, especially when we are working with the 60 percent duty cycle. So, if we compare this uh, the welding voltage uh, for the GTA welding process with the SMAW or the GMAW processes, then we will see that those processes work uh, at much higher uh, voltages than the GTAW process. 
The reason for this is that uh, uh, the tungsten uh, offers the very good uh, electron emitting capability. So, uh, the large amount of the charged particles are uh, made available by the tungsten electrode in the arc gap. So, um, even with the low uh, voltages, uh, it is able to provide those uh, charged particles in the arc, arc gap to so as to maintain the smooth and stable arc. But uh, in other cases like GTA in GMAW and the SMAW processes where uh, consumable electrode is used uh, and uh, like iron and the aluminum metals, uh, they do not have uh, the very good electron emitting capability and that is why they require higher arc voltages, uh, higher voltages so that arc can be maintained. Otherwise, it will show the tendency to get uh, extinguished. So, this is the reason why the GTAW process works with very low uh, voltages, while for the SMAW and the GMAW processes we need high arc voltages. Uh, pure tungsten electrode, uh, can, uh, tungsten electrodes can be given the different uh, shapes at the, tip, uh, at the tip especially, um, because uh, uh, this tip shape affects uh, the, the kind of uh, um, the arc uh, which is developed. Uh, if we have very uh, conical shape uh, uh, tip, uh, then it will be resulting very deeper penetration and very focused uh, arc uh, of the small size is uh, developed, while uh, um, the ball shape uh, uh, the tip results in the wider arc, uh, but with, the, uh, with the good uh, arc stability and uh, which in turn also results in the somewhat wider uh, bead and the narrower uh, shallow uh, penetration. Uh, the pure tungsten electrode is frequently given the ball uh, shaped tip, uh, ball shaped tip is uh, obtained uh, when working with the DC EN that is a state polarity to have the advantage of the good arc stability. Uh, apart from this, uh, many other shapes can be given to the tungsten electrode. For example, we can uh, have uh, the tungsten electrode, uh, the tip with the conical shape, where this angle matters a lot. And uh, it is common to work with say angles like uh, 60 degree, 90 degree, 120 degree. So, uh, sh uh, shallow is the angle a smaller is the angle of uh, the conical tip, sharper will be the tip and greater will be the tendency for heat localization. So, the localization of heat in very sharp tipped um, end of the electrode uh, causes the rapid degradation of the electrode tip and which in turn decreases the life of uh, the electrode rapidly and to avoid this kind of localization, it is preferred to have either uh, the conical tip with a larger angle or uh, the ball shape tip is formed, so that uh, the very smooth and stable arc can be obtained instead of uh, the case where very pointed. Uh, tip is used. So, this kind of tip causes the high heat localization, while the heat localization is somewhat reduced in case of the ball shape. So, as far as the heat localization is concerned, uh, the, the heat localization will be less in case of the ball shaped, while it will be more in case of the very pointed conical shaped tips. And this uh, and therefore, um, the ball shaped tip uh, uh, ball shaped tipped uh, electrodes offer the longer life of the electrode than the uh, <coughs> than the uh, conical shaped uh, tips with very small angles but the conical shaped tipped uh, uh, electrodes offer the deeper penetration and uh, the narrow uh, weld bead is obtained. So, because of uh, these uh, advantages as per the situation, we can work with uh, either pointed uh, uh, means a conical shaped electro tip or the ball shape uh, tipped. Uh, further, we can use the flat uh, uh, tips also, uh, flat means having the um, very square uh, 
the surface at the tip of the electrode this kind of uh, is uh, also used. So, there are variety of shapes uh, uh, which can be given to the tip of the electrode and according to the shape they will have the difference in the, the, the shape of the arc and the localization of the heat at the tip of electrode which in turn will be affecting the, the life of the uh, electrode. So, uh, continuing with this, uh, uh, so uh, to have uh, the better life of uh, the electrode, it is necessary uh, that uh, the temperature of the electrode is maintain, maintained uh, within the safe limit and uh, the temperature of the electrode is primarily governed by uh, the two things, one is electrical resistance heating due to the flow of current through the electrode itself and the heat which is uh, transferred from the arc uh, to the electrode tip. So, to, uh, uh, to reduce the electrical resistance heating uh, frequently uh, the electrodes, tungsten electrodes are frequently coated with the other materials like thorium, zirconium, lanthanum and uh, accordingly they are called thorium, zirconium, lanthanum modified tungsten electrode and uh, this uh, also helps, um, uh, the, these coatings helps in increasing the electrical conductivity as well as uh, these also uh, provide the easy uh, release of the electrons uh, from the electrode and uh, this easy release of the electrons help in uh, working of uh, um, these uh, electrodes uh, very effectively uh, especially from the arc stability point of view. So, when uh, the tungsten electrode is modified with the thorium, zirconium and lanthanum, uh, it can be effectively used with the AC and the DC EP where electrode is made positive. So, the base metal is expected to uh, uh, expected to release the electrons. Under these conditions, uh, these coatings uh, 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 on the electrode improves the electron emitting capability which in turn enhances the arc stability. So, when this happens, the electrode life is improved significantly and uh, therefore, coated electrodes uh, are uh, preferred for the conditions where uh, AC or the DC EP is used. The tungsten electrode welding the DC EP is preferred for the reactive metals when uh, uh, reactive metals like aluminum and magnesium, stainless steel etcetera to take the advantage of the cleaning action. We know that when um, electrode is made positive, so work piece will be acting as a cathode and uh, with these metal systems, the cathode very mobile kind of the cathode spot is formed which helps in um, uh, which helps in cleaning action because uh, the mobile cathode spot helps to uh, loosen the oxide layer which is being formed during the welding onto the base material and uh, uh, that uh, loosening uh, leads to the easy removal of the oxide layer from the base material and that is how the um, that is how the use of the DC uh, EP helps in, uh, uh, in cleaning action during the melding due to the uh, mobile cathode spot formation. Uh, if we look into the further details of uh, uh, the welding torch and uh, the way by which electrode is uh, uh, used in the GTAW process, uh, if we see here the, the, the GTAW or the TIG welding torch includes the three main components. Uh, one is non consumable tungsten electrode, second is collet and third is uh, nozzle. So, nozzle uh, and uh, outside we have nozzle and inside that uh, we uh, have collet and further the collet is held uh, will be holding the electrode, uh, tungsten electrode in proper position. So, the role of these elements tungsten electrode will be used uh, will be striking the arc with the base material, collet will be uh, holding the electrode in position. So, collets are designed to accommodate the electrodes of the variety of, uh, uh, of the varying diameters and uh, when the electrode is uh, placed in position and arc is striked, the flow of the gas around the arc is uh, started. So, the gas nozzle helps to form a jet of the inert gases around the arc, so that the weld pool and the tungsten electrode can be protected from the atmospheric contamination. Further, the diameter of the gas nozzle must be selected in such a way that a very effective and sound jet around the arc is developed so that the weld pool can be protected from the uh, atmospheric contamination. The gas nozzle 
needs to be replaced uh, due to the wear and tear under the influence of uh, uh, the heat uh, during the welding. So, we know that uh, the uh, nozzle is in very close to the welding arc and the high heat generated during the uh, welding and damages the nozzle tip. So, the once uh, the nozzle tip is damaged, uh, it uh, loses its shape and becomes unable to form very sound uh, the jet of the shielding gases around the arc to protect the weld pool. So, because of the damage to the uh, nozzle uh, by the heat of the arc, uh, it is necessary that the damaged nozzle is replaced um, frequently and uh, at uh, regular intervals, um, because the damaged nozzles does not form uniform stream of the inert gas jet around the weld pool for protection of the uh, 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 for protection from the atmospheric gases. So, the gas nozzle must be replaced uh, regularly, uh, because it uh, loses its shape under the influence of the heat and uh, uh, once it uh, loses its shape, uh, it will not be able to form the sound and effective jet around the arc and uh, that is why the nozzle must be replaced at the regular interval. Now, we will see that uh, um, uh, shielding gas, a variety of shielding gases are used and they are allowed to flow uh, at the different uh, rates uh, during the welding. So, what are the factors that affect the selection of the shielding gases and uh, how these uh, thing affect uh, the, uh, the, the way by which sound weld joint uh, is obtained. So, if you see the shielding gas flow rate can vary significantly from 5 to 50 liters per minute. So, how what should be the flow rate that will be governed by that the diameter of the electrode and the nozzle size and the speed at which we are moving the arc uh, during the welding and the extent of the protection which is desired. So, the welding torch is generally uh, and if depending upon this flow rate, we can have ineffective or the effective the shielding. Uh, the tungsten uh, uh, TIG uh, welding torch is rated on the basis of the current carry, current carrying capacity and uh, uh, this current carrying capacity uh, may be 200 maximum 300 amperes uh, 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 decides uh, that how much maximum current can be obtained from the power source uh, associated with the welding torch and it directly affects the welding speed because higher is the welding current we can draw more heat can be generated which in turn will allow us to have the higher the speed of the melting and so higher speed of the welding can be obtained which in turn will help to achieve the higher uh, the production rate. So, depending upon the current carrying capacity the welding torch can be either water cooled or the air cooled. Air cooled welding torches are generally used for the low current range um, while uh, uh, the water cooled torches are used for uh, the high uh, current range. Maximum they can go as high as up to the 1000 uh, ampere. It is common to work uh, uh, with the G GTA processes up to 200 or, three, uh, or uh, 300 or 350 amperes. So, apart from the shielding gas, uh, we uh, commonly use uh, uh, the filler material uh, for uh, uh, filling in the um, uh, gap between the base material to be joined. The filler material will be used uh, in light of the base materials and uh, the, uh, the kind of weld geometry which is uh, being um, uh, used for developing a weld joint. The filler material normally is not used when uh, welding thin sheets like 1 mm thin sheets, uh, 1 mm thick sheet uh, is welded by directly melting the edges of the plates. Uh, and uh, allowing it to solidify to obtain the metallic continuity. But uh, when thick sheets and thick plates are welded by GTAW process, um, the filler materials um, in form of rods uh, is invariably used uh, and uh, this uh, uh, is uh, commonly used uh, in case of the nuclear and aerospace components. Under those conditions, uh, when thick plates are to be welded, the filler material is added in form of the, the rods. Uh, of the different sizes. The rod is placed uh, in the arc region, so that it melts and uh, helps to supply uh, the metal 
between the plates to be uh, joined. In this case, uh, the spattering is uh, uh, found minimum or, uh, or most of the metal from the filler rods uh, we can deposit without uh, uh, loss. So, the deposition efficiency is found to be much higher with the GTAW process. The filler materials may be of the different sizes of the different diameters and lengths depending upon the, the base material which is to be used and its thickness to be used for feeding. The small diameter electrode uh, like 0.8 to 2.4 mm size uh, normally pull type wire feed system is used if uh, the mechanized uh, feeding is to be done of the filler wire. But uh, in most of the practical situations, uh, we feed the, um, uh, we can feed the filler wire manually also. Um, the post type is preferred uh, because uh, it helps to uh, feed the uh, wire in the arc zone uh, without uh, uh, the tendency to break it under the pull type uh, the wire feed system. So, the wire will have tendency to get uh, um, uh, break. So, to avoid that uh, breaking tendency of the filler wire push type of the wire feed system or mechanism is uh, preferred. The, however, the selection of the filler material uh, is crucial in the sense that sometimes uh, the selection of the same uh, filler material as that of the uh, base metal composition leads to the uh, cracking of the weld metal. So, the sometimes the filler material is intentionally selected of the different uh, composition so that uh, uh, the thermal expansion coefficient and the solidification temperature range of the base metal um, is such that it does not uh, cause much cracking of the weld uh, zone. So, the selection of the filler material that is why is found to be very crucial for uh, uh, successful welding because in some cases even use of the filler material of the similar uh, kind similar to that of the base material also causes the cracking of the uh, weld material. Uh, therefore, the selection of the wire, filler wire should be done after giving the full consideration to the mechanical property requirement. Like we should select the filler material such that uh, uh, one it is able to offer the properties that uh, will be able to fulfill the functional requirement of the weld joint maybe which may be in terms of the hardness, tensile strength or the fatigue performance. Um, we will also would like to see that whether filler material is uh, metallurgically compatible or not. The, the use of the metallurgically incompatible materials can lead to the very embrittlement or the cracking um, during the welding or just after the welding and uh, the purpose may be lost uh, uh, as far as the development of the weld joint is concerned for uh, taking the service load. Further, we need to see that how the filler material can help in controlling the cracking tendency uh, of the weld metal. So, the cracking tendency of the base material also can be controlled using the uh, by selection of the proper filler material. For example, the hardenable steels which are very crack sensitive uh, due to the kind of differential expansion and contraction experience experienced by the base material during the welding. If we uh, use the weld material of uh, of very uh, of the low strength, uh, then it will help in reducing the residual stress development in the heat affected zone, which is found to be very crack sensitive. So, use of the low strength filler material sometimes help in reducing the cracking tendency of the heat affected zones, especially in the hard naval steels. So, if the filler material is selected properly, um, then that can help in uh, controlling the cracking tendency of the base material. Uh, for example, uh, the welding uh, of the aluminum alloys, we frequently use the aluminum silicon filler material where silicon content can vary from the 5 to 12 percent and uh, this is very uh, commonly used and very uh, much preferred because of the very low melting temperature it requires for the melting and very good fluidity of the aluminum silicon filler materials and very good properties it offers in. Uh, for uh, uh, carrying the uh, load and uh, as far as performance of the weld joint is concerned. So, uh, so the use of the aluminum silicon filler materials in case of the aluminum welding uh, is uh, very common for uh, welding the different types of the uh, aluminum alloys. 
So, in addition to the aluminum silicon filler materials for aluminum welding, we also use the aluminum magnesium filler materials, but uh, these aluminum magnesium filler materials are found uh, suitable under the certain conditions only, uh, because in other conditions it leads to the uh, solidification cracking. Uh, for example, aluminum 5 percent filler material is also used for welding of some of aluminum alloys, uh, welding of the dissimilar uh, steels, uh, uh, namely stainless steel with the uh, carbon and alloy steels for high temperature applications needs the development of the butter layer uh, before welding uh, for reducing the carbon uh, migration related problems. So, those uh, steels when under the conditions when dissimilar steels are to be welded, one of the commonly encountered problem especially high for high temperature applications is that of the carbon migration, where high uh, where carbon uh, shifts from the high carbon steel zone to the low carbon steel zone and this uh, leads to the problem of uh, the carbon uh, car carbide precipitation and uh, the variety of the cracking tendencies. So, to uh, reduce those tendencies uh, frequently a butter layer using suitable filler material is um, made so that uh, uh, the, this kind of carbon migration can be reduced. Uh, you will see uh, the, uh, the, the kind of shielding gases which are used with the uh, gas tungsten arc welding process. Uh, these gases are the helium, uh, argon, a mixture of helium and argon, nitrogen and oxygen. If we see here, the first three gases uh, or the gases mixture uh, are the inert gases, while last two are, uh, uh, are the uh, active gases, but uh, these are uh, inactive with certain metal systems uh, like steels when we, we are welding the steels with the uh, 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 while using these nitrogen and uh, uh, the carbon dioxide as a shielding gas, these help us in uh, uh, protecting the weld pool with the reasonable degree of uh, 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 protection and uh, uh, that is why um, uh, uh, and further these gases are the cost effective also. Uh, so, for somewhat less critical applications, the active gases are also used as shielding gases with the GTAW process. So, uh, however, the selection of uh, the particular kind of gas is dictated by the metal to be welded. If the metal is very highly reactive to the um, oxygen uh, like uh, aluminum uh, and uh, uh, the magnesium and uh, 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 the titanium, in that case, uh, uh, the uh, helium and argon uh, gases are or their mixtures are very effectively used for the shielding purpose. Uh, uh, similarly, in case of thickness, uh, if for welding thick sheets, if you want to develop the more amount of heat to have the desired penetration, then the helium is preferred. Otherwise, argon can be used for uh, welding the reactive metals and uh, the criticality of application, all uh, the weld joints for critical applications are invariably welded uh, using the inert gases like helium organ or their mixtures. So, helium is most preferred gas for the critical weld joints uh, um, as compared e e e even if we compare with that of uh, the organ and the economics is the third factor that affects the uh, the selection of the suitable gas. Apart from these factors like uh, uh, the factors like um, the stability of the arc uh, uh, is also affected by the shielding gas. So, uh, uh, but uh, the selection of the shielding gas is mainly dictated by these uh, uh, factors. Now, we will see one by one under what conditions particular kind of shielding gas uh, can be used and what are the important technological factors related to the each uh, type of the gas. Like when um, the nitrogen and the hydrogen are sometimes added with the inert gases for specific purposes such as the increasing arc voltage and arc stability, which in turn helps in increasing the heat of the arc. So, addition of these two gases with the inert gases like argon and then this addition helps to have the higher arc voltage and uh, better arc stability, which in turn helps in increasing uh, the heat being generated by the arc and high, uh, the high heat generation by the arc with the addition of these gases helps in developing uh, the weld joints of the thicker sheets at a higher speed. Um, further, the active and the inert gases uh, are being used uh, 
as a sealing gases in the GTA, W and GMAW processes depending upon the kind of metal to be welded and the criticality of the applications for which these are to be used. Carbon dioxide is mostly used for, uh, for the economical reasons and uh, for producing the reasonably good uh, quality weld joints uh, of the steels uh, and the ferrous metal systems because it provides the required protection to the weld pool from the atmospheric contamination. However, the protection under the high temperature conditions from this uh, uh, gas uh, is not found to be very effective because of the thermal decomposition of the CO2 results in the CO and O2 and the presence of the oxygen in the arc environment uh, leads to deteriorate the uh, quality of the weld joint and it decreases the soundness of the weld joint. That is why uh, the uh, carbon use of the carbon dioxide as a shielding gas for welding of steel uh, offers the good quality, but the quality is not uh, very high for the uh, so where it can be used for the so that it can be used for the critical applications. So, generate uh, use of uh, the CO2 under the high temperature conditions generates these uh, gases like CO and O2, which in turn adversely affect the quality and the soundness of the weld joint. Uh, if we see the uh, inert gases, then among the inert gases, argon and the helium are most commonly used uh, sealing gases for developing the high quality weld joints of the reactive metals and the ferrous metals. These two inert gases um, are uh, as a sealing gases uh, play uh, different kind of roles under the different conditions uh, and their characteristics are also found to be significantly different. If we see the ionization potential of the helium is found to be much higher than the argon and because of this uh, uh, application of the helium as a sealing gas results in the higher arc voltage than the argon and the higher arc voltage in turn leads to have the different V i characteristic where V i curve is uh, on the higher side than when uh, argon is used. So, because of the difference in the arc voltage uh, uh, when uh, helium is used then the argon we get uh, the different V i characteristic for the argon and the helium and the V i characteristic for uh, the helium is always uh, above that of uh, the argon under the identical arc length conditions. So, the arc voltage generated by the helium for a given arc length uh, is found to be higher than that is generated by the argon and which in turn results in uh, the hotter helium arc than the argon arc and a hotter helium arc helps in deeper penetration and the faster melting. Uh, for uh, uh, welding of uh, the thick sheets and the metals of the high thermal conductivity. And uh, because of these reasons, the helium is preferred under the certain conditions when either thickness of the sheet to be welded is high or the thermal conductivity of the metal to be welded is uh, high as compared to that of argon. If we see uh, the V i characteristic curve of, uh, of the GTA process where uh, in one case if you are using helium and another case you are we are using argon. So, the helium invariably results in the higher uh, arc voltage um, uh, than the, uh, than the uh, argon when the argon is used as a shielding gas and this difference is mainly attributed to the difference in their ionization, ionization potentials. Further if we see uh, the, uh, the, the current level at which uh, the arc volt, uh, the, the voltage uh, with the helium minimum uh, arc voltage with the helium is found to be around uh, uh, the 120 to 150 amperes, while the minimum uh, arc voltage uh, is found to be at around 50 uh, to 60 amperes. So, this uh, offers us uh, the, the, uh, the, the difference in the way by which uh, the helium can be used. Uh, uh, during the welding uh, as compared to the argon. Helium actually because of the higher arc voltage, it allows us the greater flexibility in terms of the arc uh, length as compared to that of uh, uh, the argon. So, we will see uh, the further details of uh, the difference in uh, the uh, effect of the type of the shielding gas uh, on the 
uh, welding performance of the GTAW process. So, the helium is preferred for welding of thick plates at high speed, especially of the metal systems having the high thermal conductivity and high melting point, because helium helps in generating the more amount of the heat during the welding and which permits the melting at the high rate and with the deeper penetration. Further, helium offers the advantage of the high thermal conductivity over the argon. The high thermal conductivity of the helium helps in better transfer of the heat from the arc zone to the base material and thus permits in more effective use of the heat being generated during the welding uh, to the base material for melting the fang surfaces, so that the weld joint can be obtained. And because of this uh, arc efficiency is found to be higher when helium is used as a shielding gas as compared to the argon. So, this is what uh, has been mentioned uh, the better arc, uh, better heat transfer from the uh, arc, uh, heat, uh, better transfer of the heat from the arc helps in uh, uh, rapid melting of the fang surfaces, which in turn allows us to uh, go with the higher welding speed. Further, uh, the selection of the shielding gas affects the stability of the arc. The helium is found to offer more problems related with the arc stability and the arc initiation than the argon. And this uh, difference is, uh, this uh, problem is mainly attributed to the higher uh, ionization potential of the helium than the argon, uh, because higher ionization potential of the helium means uh, the fewer charged particles it will be uh, providing in the arc gap between the electrode and the workpiece. And the presence of the fewer charged particles in the gap will be resulting in uh, the difficulties in flow of current required for initiation and maintenance of the arc. And that is why uh, when the helium is used and high ionization potential um, offered by the helium gas uh, results in the presence of the fewer charged particles between the electrode and work piece uh, and which in turn makes the initiation and maintenance of the welding arc uh, difficult. Further, uh, therefore, our characteristics of the um, uh, our characteristics uh, in case of the GTAW process is found to be the different for uh, the helium and uh, the argon. Further, if you recall the previous diagram, where we have seen that the minima arc voltage is found uh, uh, found in the V i characteristic curve with the both the gases occur at the different level. It occurs uh, the minimum arc voltage occurs at the much higher side with the helium and then that with the argon. So, the welding current for argon corresponding to the lowest arc voltage is usually found around the 50 ampere, while that for the helium it occurs around the 150 ampere. This is what we can see in this diagram also. If you use the two different arc lengths, then for a given shielding gas, the two different VI characteristics are used. But if we change the uh, the shielding gas, then for the identical arc lengths, uh, there will be huge change in the VI characteristic uh, curve location. And because of this, uh, if we see uh, the, the minima uh, arc voltage is found to be around uh, the 50 volts uh, for uh, uh, the argon, while it is found around 100 uh, to 150 amperes in case of uh, the helium. So, the reduction in welding current below this critical level of uh, uh, the current uh, up to certain stage increases the arc voltage and uh, this in turn permits uh, some flexibility in arc length control uh, during the welding. So, uh, further, if we see uh, uh, the kind of uh, the flow rate difference which is uh, required in case of argon and uh, the helium. Uh, uh, for developing the sound weld joint, the flow rate of the argon is uh, uh, flow rate of the argon for uh, developing the sound weld joint is found to be very low as compared to that of the helium. So now we'll see uh, that uh, the how the flow rate conditions uh, uh, vary with the selection of the shielding gas. Uh, the argon uh, flow rate is uh, um, uh, is about 1.3 times and uh, uh, about 10 times uh, uh, heavier, heavier than the air and the helium respectively. If we see uh, the density of uh, the argon, it is found 1.3 times 
uh, to that of the air and about 10 times uh, heavier than the helium. And because of this difference in the characteristics of the argon as compared to the air and the helium, you find a lot of difference in the, the flow rate which is required. And because of the difference in the density of air with the shielding gases, and uh, di this di difference determines the flow rate of the particular shielding gas required to form, uh, form blanket uh, over the weld pool and the arc zone to, pro to provide the protection against the environmental attack. If we see the gases coming out of the nozzle, uh, if they are heavier than the air, then they will tend to settle down all around the weld pool and will provide the effective uh, protection against the atmospheric contamination. But if they are lighter, uh, then they will tend to move up uh, immediately after coming out of the nozzle and they will uh, be uh, less effective in providing the protection to the uh, weld pool from the atmospheric contamination. So, if we see this data, the argon is found to be heavier than the air and, uh, and it is found much heavier than the helium and because of this uh, argon flow rate required is found to be much lower than that is required for argon. We will see further in the next presentation, what are the different factors that uh, dictate the flow rate conditions required for helium and argon and how uh, we can compare the performance of uh, the shielding gases and uh, namely argon and helium as far as GTAW process is concerned. So, now I would like to summarize this presentation. In this presentation we have, we have seen that uh, uh, what is the uniqueness in the GTAW process and what uh, are the components of the GTAW system which uh, make it and what is the role of the uh, uh, electrode the power source and uh, the kind of shielding gases which are used uh, with this process. Now, in coming presentation, we will see some other details related to the GTAW process and uh, uh, we will see that what are the other variants of the GTAW process like a pulse gas tungsten arc welding process or the hot wire tungsten arc welding process and uh, how can we initiate the arc uh, in this uh, process. Those things will be coming up in the next presentation. Thank you for your attention.